should be supplied. It's called cordial bread. It's called cordial bread. If somebody asks you what you are enjoying, to tell him simply, it is the mission of the essence yes. memory. How it looks? It looks like glistening white line. It looks glistening white line. Next. So, there is some transition in the at the shiver design. One is the triangular to the corner and to the table. Okay? One triangular has shown. Then here is the corner and to the table. So, there is a transition at the shiver design. Decisional memory, as you know, is the termination of the decisional memory. Then, triangular mesh work is inserted into the corner stroma. It is inserted into the corner stroma. Next. So, triangular mesh work, that is the second structure that enters first the shiva design, but I will start second the triangular mesh work. So, triangular mesh work it is the main structure. It is the main structure which is responsible for the training of the echoes human. The name of it is Hackers. So it's a C-like structure. It's a C-like structure. So we have different, there are, it is made of connective tissue. It's made of connective tissue, collagen and elastic. elastic. And number second, it has a contractile or phagostic property. It has contractile and phagostic property. So there are three types of mesh work. Three types of measurement. Next, what is called UVL measurement? What is called UVL? Other than the called almost signal. And third is called dextra canal tumor. That is called dextra canal tumor. Suppose if we start from here, if we start from here, this is the UVL measurement, this is the corneal signal measurement, and this is the dextra canal tumor. What is why it is called extra canal tumor? Because it's closer to shiller material. It's closer to this shiller. So shiller is not from the one boundary of So the pore size decreases as we go from inside out. As we go from inside. This pore size is higher. It's around uh, uh, 25 to 75 micron. This pore size is smaller than this. This is around 10 to 50 micron. And this force size is very really small. This is around 10 micron. So as we go from one measure to the other measure, the pole size decreases. So it is a C like structure. So we need to exercise to move to go into the so suppose the axis comes from here, it moves from this network, UA network, to the corner spur, to the dexter canal tunnel, then it goes into shiramus canal. It goes into shiramus canal. So shiramus canal is a circular, it's a circular, circular canal around the limits. It is circular canal around the limits. What's specific about shiramus canal? There are two things. One is the line by single layer of endothelium. It is a line by small layer of endothelium. Number second, it is suppose its junctions are fairly straight along this side. Okay? But once on the other side, the junctions are packed. It doesn't they do it. So these are the two classic things about the Shillam's canal. Once the echo goes from the uric, uric, then the corneal sugar, then the dextra canal sugar, then it enters into the shilamus canal. After shilamus canal, it has different branches. It has different branches. There are two systems of sort of vessels, we can say. They are called collective channels. They are called collective channels or aqueous veins. Aqueous veins. So, next. So, one is direct. One is direct without any branching. They are called direct vessels. They are called direct vessels. They are also called aqueous veins. They are called aqueous veins. <coughs> then there are one more receptor branches, which are branches, which are around 15 to 20 in terms of almost. So those branches, those branches are called collective channels. They are less than 
less than zero. Direct power S branching the mode. Okay, branching branching vessel which are called indirect vessel, they are around 15 to 20, and direct power is 5 to 6 like that. So after uh, next slide, next slide, I will this. Not the next. Oh, yes. So this is the shiller which came out. This is the shiller which came out going around the rims. Next. So this is a group of collective channels. This is a group of collective channels. One is branchy and others are straight. Others are straight. Next. So this I told you that the junctions of the uh, machinery side they are leaky and the junctions on the other side are tight. Next. So this is direct system and indirect system. Next. Then these are the vessels basically. You want to be this this kind of They will go from the they will go from the uh, shallow channel, they go from the shallow channel. To the subconjectural space or epicycle vessel or epicycle vessel of subconjectural vessel. So the mesh mode type, they are indirect, they are called, they are around 15 to 20, they are straight without any branching, they are 5 to 6, they go drink into epicycle or conjectural space. Okay? So how that's how the atlas goes from the end. It goes from the mesh rope, then it goes to the shiller channel, then it goes to the collector channel, and ultimately it lands in the subconjectural or external equations. Next. So this direct system I have told you, they are straighter, they are straighter and they are called atlas wing. This is the intercircular wings axis. Which are called indirect system of vessels. Next. So ultimately they drain into external or conjectural veins. That I want to do. Then they can go through the superior of thalamic vein or the inferior of thalamic vein. Next. Then third structure is similar spur. That third structure is a similar spur. So it is the insertion of the circular. It is the insertion of the circular into the uh, into the behind the directory ratio. So in front is the directory ratio, behind is the same body. So in between is the circular circle. It, it is inserted as a it's a page like a white band. It's a page of white band as a translucent structure. Or all the support type thing. It can be 20 per hand, 85 per hand. So, so first structure is your design, then is the trajectory measure, then is the signal support. Third, the signal support at both in the cellular body band. So, so here I want to tell you one more thing. There are two types of trajectory measure of the And this is non-pigmented, posterior is pigmented. So, currently there are two bands of the trajectory ratio. And it is non pigmented, posterior pigment. Why posterior pigment? Because the uh, iris pigment is exposed to the light. And that is deposited in this posterior part of the trajectory ratio. So, it becomes pigmented. It becomes pigmented. Next. Then we have gloss, that is the cellular body band. That is this. This is cellular body. So it is basically this this part, cellular body. Because the iris sunset is inserted into the root of the iris. Some part of the cellular sorry, into the, the root of the cellular body. Some part of the cellular body becomes the part of the anterior channel. How many parts of the cellular body have? How many parts of the cellular body have? Okay, good. Fast flight data and fast uh, and is what? Fast flight data. Why? Because that forms the axis. 
So like we can use this process, the CBD process, a sort of a finger like process. So first, first plan is the first thing. Total, the total uh, uh, dimension or the antifoxial length of the CBD body is around 5. How much? 5. In that around 2 or 2.5 is the first flight data and 2.5 is the first plan. That's the most important. Next. So, it is clear from this lecture that we have four structures in the angle, one is cylindrical, that is the trabecular angle, that is the cylindrical, and then the cylindrical body back. So, cylindrical is why listening. Trabecular measure means and this is non pigmented, posterior is pigmented. Then we have again a paved line, that's the signal signal, white line, almost a white line country. Then behind that, the heavy pigmented cellular body band. So these are the four structures which is formed by the head. Then you can add one root of eyes. You can one add one, but basically these are the four structures. Next. Next. Innervation is by subclassical nerve plexus. Next. That's not that very important for the brain. Then how we assess the anterior cerebral angle? Can we assess the anterior cerebral angle directly? Can we see the anterior cerebral angle by torch by? No. Why? Yes. There's a total angle reflection. So light goes from angles, it comes out of the limbus. So we cannot see the anterior cerebral and angle. Have you heard about the critical angle? Critical and you read about that. So once you throw the door to the corner, it does not read to the angle. So we cannot see the angle. So we have to see some other things which are diagnostic of the anterior cerebral angle or anterior cerebral gap. Okay? So one is the one head test. One head test. What's one head test? One hand test is we use on the cylinder. 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 We use the beam on the corner. We use on the beam on the corner. We measure the anterior cerebral gap. We measure the anterior cerebral gap. We measure the anterior cerebral in the base. In the base is near the limbs. So then we compare it with the order thickness. We compare it with the order thickness. How much is the order thickness? That is 0.5 or 0.6 millimeters. That is around 500 or 600 microns. Because central order thickness is 500 microns or 525 microns. Central order thickness will be around 600 or 650 microns. So we compare with that. One of the shadow forms of the corner. The beam for the corner that is called the eyes. Then we see in between the black area. How much? It's equal to the corner beam or less than that. So if it is contact between the eyes and corner, so angle is obliterated. This is like this. This beam is the optical section, it's on the corner, it's on the eyes. So we see it's in between. How much? Okay. So if it is suppose equivalent to this corner beam, so we see. 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1. If it is half of this, this is half of this, this is 1 half. If it is 1 fourth, this is called 1 fourth. If it is less than 1 fourth, that 1 is less than 1 fourth. If there is total contact of this white beam and this white beam, that no, there is no distance between the two. So that is grade 0. Okay? That is grade 0. If this is the grade basically. So first is the grade 0. Where there is total contact between this beam and this beam. That is the grade 1, where it is 1 fourth. This distance is 1 fourth of the order. That is between 1 fourth, uh, this is less than 1 fourth, this is equivalent to 1 fourth. So then we just equivalent to 1 half. Half of the order of this. This is equivalent to uh, corner width or corner width. So this is how the mod had exposed. Next. Then torch. We can give you the target. The way we are showing you the color of the blood, let's hold the target and see the, how much is the shadowing on the nasal 
side. I want to look straight on God. Because once the eyes fall, once the eyes is fall, or call me like this, once you pull the door to you, it will form a shadow. It will form a shadow. So, depending on how much is the shadow, you can see how much is the uh, and the shadow and the shadow. Suppose here, once you pull the door to you, only this much is the only only this vision is illuminated. This one third is illuminated. If this is this, here the almost one third to two thirds is illuminated. But there is still shadow in here. This is third, almost whole of the uh, eyes is uh, illuminated, except the small recent here. And here the full is fully illuminated. You can understand this I will explain it again. If the all the eyes more covered, if the eyes is more covered, if we throw the torch from the temporal side, even on the temporal side there will be shadow. This is this. Okay. There is the nasal side is shadow, but there is some part of the temporal eyes of the shadow. As the side deeper, gentlemen, so half of the almost eyes in the ocean. If there is more deep gentlemen, side is deeper, so then almost four of the eyes is illuminated. If there is total deep and near gentlemen, so the whole of the eyes is illuminated without any reason or dark reason. I mean it is more the shadow you see, more you will be the shadow. More you will be the shadow. But this 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 gentleman is more shadow. This gentleman is less shadow. This gentleman is less less shadow than this. This is normal. Okay. Next. Then there is one machine which is called a UPM. That is called UPM. We that is for a copy place for the body. A copy place for the body here, and that the ultrasound that creates a picture of eyes, that creates a picture of the body, and we can make it anterior there and or anterior there that. But that penetrates only the anterior segment of the eye. That is not used for the evolution of posterior segment. Because it's a very really, uh, almost um, uh, maybe a, um, that is, uh, we see megahertz. How many megahertz does the ultrasound have? It has probably a heavy side of megahertz. The penetration is less, but the resolution is more of the anterior segment. Next. Mm -hmm. So this is the machine, and this is placed like this. This is the machine, the heavy machine, then it measures this formula of the eyes and the Next. Then we have the uh, reason that the optical chromography, what is called anterior segment OCT or angle OCT. Anterior segment OCT it also uh, uses the ultrasound and it forms the cornea and then, then it forms the iris pattern and in between is the angle. In between is the angle. It is called anterior segment OCT. It uses the uh, ultrasound, very high. Uh, High frequency ultrasound, around 25,000 or around 50,000 ultrasounds per second, like that. Next. Then we have the gomeoscopy. That's a very really simple thing we can use in the OPD. We put a lens, we put a lens and mirror, and we put a coupling agent. We put a coupling agent. Coupling agent is a viscous or a lubricant in between. So then we put it, then we put the beam on the mirror. This mirror sees the superior angle, superior which is the inferior angle, meter sees the lateral angle, lateral sees the, these are called indirect gonioscopes. It's called indirect gonioscopes. Then we have some direct gonioscopes which are used surgically, which are used surgically. They, one of them is Seren uh, Jacob. That's a direct Jacob. That's a direct Jacob. It's the equal case here, gomeoscopy where we have some uh, different types of gomeoscopy. One is gold man, one is gold man, other is zeiss, other is zeiss. Gold man, then it is more. That then it is more. So that that more than the body, we are equivalent to the body. Zeiss, then it is less. That then it is less, less like uh, 8 mm or 7 mm or like that. 
less than the corneal. So that means for indentation. That means for indentation to press the cornea or to press the so that the actual goes into the sand. So we have two types of horoscopes. One is one of one, one is the direct and other is the indirect. Other is the indirect. In the direct one, what we use in the OPP, there are two types. One is gold man, other is size. Gold mean man has a bigger diameter, it is non indentation. Then size, that is a smaller diameter, it is used for indentation. Then we have the surgical gonoscopes, which are used during surgery to cut the diameter natural or anything or even in the greatest glaucoma surgeries, they are used to place the stents in the trabecular mesh holes like that. So they are called slender type of lenses. So that is a separate topic. Next. So I told you, in that photoscopes, uh, gold band, which is non indentation Zeiss, Sussman or Postman. These are names, they are very rarely used. They are the indentation gold lens, especially the size. And there is one more thing, it's known the, the direct contract. There is a contract, direct contract. In gold band, there is a copper injection. I told you lubricant before. But in size, no lubricant before. So directly on the cause. So you see the end. But it is a, a cooperation is a problem and uh, incoming is the problem. And the uh, group can move here and there. That, so these are the Gorgio lenses. But next, this is the Zeiss Gorgio lens. Next, this is the Sussman type of lens with no handle. This is a Postman type of lens. Next, Next, next. So then we see a grading system. Then we see a grading system of angle. You can see a silly body. It is open angle. You can see the sequence circle. So if you see the silly body, the angle is open. That is around 40 degrees. 40 or 45. Okay? If you see a sequence circle, circle will be an open angle. Okay? So angle is around 35. Okay? If we see now a trapezoidal mesh hole, okay, that is a uh, potentially closing angle. If we see only simple circle, that is a very really narrow angle. If we see a audio, uh, uh, audio um, eye stretch, that is a great deal of So if we see here, there is 35 to 45 degree. It's a wide open, we see all, from silly body to all structures, from triangle to silly body. If the angle goes from 20 to 25, 25, so we see a possible circle. If it is to, uh, 20 degrees, we see tragic dimension. If it is 10 degrees, we see shrine design only. If there is zero degrees, no structure can be seen. So according to this figure that wide open, open, moderately narrow, very narrow, close. Okay, so in wide open, you see silly body. In open, you see silly circle circle. In moderately open, you see tight to the metal. In very narrow, you see circle circle only. This is circle body. So you have this line only. And in close, you see no structures. Okay, so if we see silly body, or we see circle circle, it's open. In silly body, it's wide open. In uh, circle circle, it is just open. Okay, then if we see Rapidly like mesh hole only, that is more than we If it is, we see only square design, it's big Great 
what we see only in the Shivaji life, and very zero we see no. So remember the day on the book. Okay? And if it comes to the exam, it's basic. Okay, if you just have the exam, you know this subject. Next. So again, same things. The, in grade 4, you see all four structures. In grade 0, we see only Shivaji life. Okay, next. Again, same thing, it is a goniscopic view. This is a safety body diagram here, this is a circular circle, this is a diagonal network, which is the Shivaji life. Then, then we the next topic as the high view. That's it, high view. So what's high fever? High fever is blood in the chamber. It's a blood in the chamber. So what are the causes of high fever? Next. What are the causes of that? So most common cause is trauma. Most common cause is trauma. Trauma by what? It can be blood, it can be perspective, or it can be surgical trauma. Like that post can be surgery also. If you remain the eye stresses, it can cause high fever. Then we have other causes like uh, we have sometimes um, mm -hmm. bullet dysplasia, clotting factors problems. Okay, like von Willebrand's disease or even there are other uh, like leukemia, anemia. You can have a bullet in the anterior channel. One more important was the eyes neovascularization. Neovascular glaucoma. Neovascular glaucoma. Neovascular glaucoma. Because there are no vessels of the eyes. They can leak. They produce the high fever. One more important was the anterior channel ions. Anterior channel ions, which are placed on the eyes. They can cause high fever. So these are the most common. Even some medication like aspirin, nisades, anticoagulants, they can produce high fever. Next. So, classification is if you are small, like 2 to 3 mm or 3 to 5 mm or more than half or full of blood. This is full of blood. Next. So, this is the main classification you should remember. One is the big one, in which there are dispersed in the atoms. Therefore, you cannot see only dark and high fever, but the RB is from the echo only. They are dispersed in the echo. This is called microscopic high like this micro high Or these are dispersed in the echo. Then we have the grade 1, that's around 1 third. Okay? Then grade 2, that's 1 third, 1 half. Okay? Then there's the grade 3, that's more than 1 half. Okay? Then grade 4 is the full chamber high Full chamber, whole of the entire chamber is filled with the blood. So again, micro high on each special field this is one third, this is one third, one half, then this is more than one, one half, around two third almost, and this is the full camp. Next. So high fever can cause glaucoma. High fever can cause glaucoma. First we shall see what is that there is high fever, what patient will present to your class is OPD. What is the complaints of patient? I have any of I have Number second, I have pain. I have pain. How much? Second, third, what would you call? You will tell I have some uh, red sheets looking in the vision. Okay, so symptoms will be pain or uh, vision. Had it is related to pain, then you have the one was a photophobia. They have photophobia. So these are the symptoms. Signs can be assessed. The high fever, uh, how much it is? Suppose here it is like this, a claw like this, then here is this, here is here, it here, is almost two thirds, then it can cause glaucoma, that's the main important. It can cause glaucoma. How does it cause glaucoma? Mechanisms of glaucoma. It can block the factory ratio. Obviously, it can block the factory ratio. Then it has some blood pigments like hemostatin and other things. They can get involved in the traffic in the show. This is the second, the second mechanism of the show. Then even the blood in the anterior chamber can block the angles physically, leading to decrease in the aqua training. So 
that's called the blocking of the enzyme. Then number four, the next case for the block is pupillary enzyme, which we call the pupillary block. Which we call the pupillary block. And <coughs> so these are different kinds of mechanisms in which it was blocked. One more thing is if we are using steroids for a long time, steroids for blocking. Okay, because treatment for high tumor is steroids. So we will uh, take a detailed history and examination, time of injury, medication, so we all speak health retail. Normally, as well as what is the history to retail, like trauma history, important, like a blood history, the history, we will do to say that then when the surgery has been done, there is any patient or any uh, drugs, so that is the health retail. Next. Then for full examination, first we have to rule out there is no perforation in the globe. What's called open globe injury. What's called open globe injury. There are two so classifications of the trauma. One is open globe and another is closed globe. Closed to globe means there is no perforation in the globe anywhere. Open globe means there is perforation somewhere in the corneum or in the skin. Then Visual activity is normal. Examination is how much the vision drop. I don't think you should see digitally only. You should see digitally. Most of the um, apparatus we use for chronometry, they should not be used in high field. Why? Because that will increase the height. Suppose we are doing the short chronometry, that will increase the height. So short chronometry is contraindicated in high field. So we have to see this to the most of the time. Then cylinder examination, that okay. Then we have to do B scan or CT. B scan, when when you do B scan? B scan is done once you are not clinically seeing the fronts. Okay, like in light of camera. Suppose there is a good camera right in front. I go to whether in the middle channel or the other channel. So we will do the B scan. Okay? So the macro character, we can't see for this. We can do the B scan. So once there is media free opaque, in that case, B scan is used. CT scan we use only if we suspect a faulty body somewhere. If we suspect a faulty body. Next. So manage How we manage the high fever? How we manage the high fever? So have most of the time, high fever is managed medically. High fever is managed. Medical. What we do with young patients is less rest, rest at home. Because if patient moves the here, here and here, that will increase the height. That will increase the height. You know, you know some people tell, uh, are telling that we can pack the both hands. Not one hand, both hands. Because if you pack one hand, it will give you this eye movement that create unrest in this eye also. So what they do, they pack the both hands. Of the, that controversy. Then, most important is that this blood is an anterior tail. It causes high rise. It causes high rise. It causes new ones. So, we have to give topical steroids. We have to give topical steroids. Since it causes high rise, we give also mid rise. Psychoplegics. So, steroids and psychoplegics. They are the means stay of the treatment in high field. Third is because it causes glaucoma, so you will give anti glaucoma. So these three drugs, steroid, midrati, and anti glaucoma. So generally we give, suppose we give prednisone uh, or we give dexamethasone, then we give cyclopredis, atropine, or cyclopredis, two, three times a day. And if the medical is written here, I, I don't think that they should be given. They should not be given. And if the medical should not be given. Why? Anybody? Because that will increase the hand. Why? Because any inflammatory affects the back of the patient. Okay? So any sort of memory, in the sense, should not be given. So I don't agree with this. So any information only one, steroids, no disease. Don't give any glucose, don't give any glucose like that. So this is the sense of the 
from sphere to thin film. Then hypotension gives hypotension to the still normal hydrogen medium of it. They will drop it and it will go over. They will know a gradual intensity. But then we need to system it. How much is the dose of spesolomide? 250 mg per day. That's a sort of medicine we can give. Four times a day, psychopathy we can give. Three times a day, gravity we can give. Two times, table of gravity combination of the two times. Like that. That's how it is treated. So most of the hydrogen they dissolve medical medicine. But there are some hydrogenons we do resolve. We do resolve. So there are some surgical indications. There are some surgical indications. Before I go to surgical indications, one point came into the mind that first the tolerance is not to be done, that I told you. Number second is once there is a full chamber hydrogen, it is called, it changes color. It changes color. And that's called eight ball hydrogen. That's called that is snooker. Snooker eight ball. That's called eight ball hydrogen. It, it happens in full time. So indication of the surgical management. Indication of the surgical management. Basically depends how much is the IOP remaining high. Because high IOP in the eye is dangerous. It is dangerous. So if there is 35 mmHg for 7 days or 15 mmHg for 5 days. So this is indication for surgical intervention or surgical surgery. <coughs> then if you have full chamber high tumor, what I told you, 8 ball high tumor. Huh? Especially if it remains for 3-4 days. It is not resolved. Okay. Then you have the cause of blood stain. Then you have if the high tumor is not resolved with the medical management. So these are the indications for surgery. These are the indications of what is called your blood stain? Once the high tumor remains in the anterior chamber for a long time, it creates glaucoma also, the pigment is deposited into the cornea. Just as you have seen in the cultural text, those high tumors in the periphery who don't who are not treated by any medication, by any medical medication. It remains for 15 days, one month, then they develop a permanent organ stain. Okay, so this is called organ stain. So if somebody asks you what are the complications of high tumor, what you are doing? Glucoma, okay. Then number seven is the organ stain. Okay. So first is the radical relation of growth, what is called IOP elevation, glaucoma particle. Second is the most important is the uh, corneal blood stain. Okay. Then if there is inflammation, it can cause peripheral anterior sinusitis also. Okay. Then it can cause uh, what is called the retreat. Well, uh, you have treated the patient, but after some time, again he comes to the eye. That's called rebleeding. That's called rebleeding. But glaucoma and corneal blood stain, they are the most dangerous complications of high tumor. So if we say this glaucoma, this is the peripheral sinusitis or posterior sinusitis, then corneal blood stain, then rebleeding, then pituitary block, and alopia, you know, spite of it. If somebody is not drinking high tumor, he is keeping the diet and food. He will not have any other he will have an alopia in the room. So when it will come under the alopia definition or not, because alopia means the eye should be normal. By definition, alopia means uh, maybe it is. Next, there will be a small spectrum that is a hypophion. That's hypophion. This is just a few lines, four, five lines, that's all. What's hypophion? So it is pass from the anterior to the pass, pass from what? By pass from to me. They are leukocytes. They are? They are? They are leukocytes. They are? They are leukocytes. So, <coughs> this is a sign of inflammation. 
I I. Okay. So generally, what are the conditions which lead to high blood pressure? Bacterial carrier. Suppose we take bacterial carrier. Suppose we take. Is it infective? It is not infective because it is only the toxins. The organisms do not go to the HIV channel. Only the toxins go to the HIV channel, and they create a permeability change in ice vessels. And because of that, there is a high risk. So, what are the classical things about high risk? Number one, it is the only part of the body which is alive. Okay. So it does not need any drainage. Number one. Number two, since it's a flu, so it will change its level. So some so person sleeping like this, it will become like this. Person sleeping like this, it will become like this. Person upright, it will become like this. So it will change its level. Do you understand the point or not? Okay. Suppose it's a colony. If patient sleep like this, it will be like this. If patient sleep like this, it will be like this. If you patient will be upright, it will be like this. Okay. So, if somebody asks us what are the forms of life, what will it be? One is bacterial corneal ulcer. Right? Number seven, any inflammation. Any inflammation. Iris. Iris cycle. Which iris cycle is called more cycle? This is one disease in the iris cycle that is called Bish disease. That is called Bish disease. In which there are gametoculatory ulcers, oral ulcers, then we have dermobacteria and dermatological ulcers. That causes hypopion. In that, hypopion is found. That is called Bish disease. That is called Bish disease. Other thing is, you can have hypopion or pseudo hypopion type. That can happen in leukemia. In leukemia, even in retinoblastoma, even in even in retinoblastoma, you can have a hypopion. Then you will be one more thing is a pseudo hypopion. Or sorry, not pseudo. Pseudo hypopion is in the retinoblastoma, tumor side thing. Then you have one more inverse hypopion. What's called? First inverse hypopion. And other important is this uh, uh, cause of hypopion is pericarditis. It's called pericarditis. In which iris is involved, pericarditis is involved, and coriolis is involved. And in that comes endocarditis. It causes endocarditis. So endocarditis, one of the important signs is hypopion. What is called hypopion? Because that of the so if we go by the policy of again inverted policy of that particular bacterial corneal ulcer, then hydrates and hydrocytes, especially in vessels disease, then we can have leukemia, we can have retinoblastoma, then before leukemia and retinoblastoma, you should tell endoxamides. You should tell endoxamides. Because endoxamides is just a I disease which causes more common hypopion than leukemia or retinoblastoma. Then I put one inverse hypopion. What inverse hypopion? Inverse hypopion is called this corneal. This corneal is no hypopion inferior. It is superior. Very nice. Some vitro retinal surgeons who are doing retinal surgeries, they place silicon oil in the vitro scale. They place Silicon oil is in this area. Once that oil comes into the anterior area, so the zonules, it will be broken. Because oil is broken up. So it is called inverse hypopion. It's called inverse hypopion. This is one more hypopion which is very important which you have not told me. It's due to the fungal borders. Is that fungal borders? What type of hypopion is it? It is non so, from the strong strand, it contains hydrogen. Bacterium is strong. Actually, you know, we can go on to the movie, Bunya. Bacterium hydrogen is called the meat bacterium. Neumococcal. Streptococcal pneumonia. Neumococcal was most common type of 
your uh, code to write uh, I copy your code on answer, write new code. I copy on, yeah. The key you call an answer, you will write new books. So new books, new books is an argument which was I don't care in the eye. Maybe zero months also, but new books is a most form. So I don't care call an answer means new books call an answer. Actually about the angle level of them, it calls an I don't care, which is not, which is not strong, which is infected. It can be slightly. Number saying it is thick. It is thick as something, it is not few. And it is immobile. It is immobile. So we don't see difference between normal hypopion 